welcome to another day in my life as a wildlife biologist and this one is going to be my day doing some fall field work out here. So I'm going to be going out with a partner so I won't be able to film too much in the field but I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing some general wildlife habitat assessments so we're going to be walking the area where they're going to be putting in a project they're going to be building something and we are going to go check to see what kind of wildlife features are out there we're going to be by a river today so we're looking for like eagle nests red-tailed hawk nests like stuff like that like raptor nests uh, as well as any wetlands that could hold amphibians because we need to know about those um, and we're also going to look for some um, bat maternity roost trees, all sorts of like general habitat things. We're also going to assess the suitability of that habitat for our species at risk that we have here in Canada. I really enjoy doing these types of surveys because it definitely takes in like big ecosystems perspective rather than like specifically just listening for one bird. It's kind of a nice little field step for me. Um, here in Alberta, it uh, snowed pretty early, so all the leaves are off the trees, so it's not super pretty. <laughs> but uh, everything kind of turned brown, but it's still nice to kind of be out towards the end of uh, my field season before winter. I seriously like I'm gonna age so prematurely because I have been exposed to like way too much sun and my skin is looking awful. I quit my job again, try to figure out if this life is a life I want to live. No, is this swamp? Frozen swamp. Something super tasty. Crongilts here. Moose, probably. Moose. Good uh, foraging grounds in here. done for the day. Just coming back to my hotel. Right, so I'm all done for the day. We bushwhacked for probably eight hours or so today to the river. We were doing some raptor nest surveys. It's not really nesting season right now in the fall, but we were just checking to see if we could see like any stick nests or anything in the trees. Um, Checked out some wetlands and saw a whole lot of bear sign, moose, deer, a lot of moose out there because it was all like swampy and nasty. So the moose really liked foraging out there. So now I'm back in my hotel room. Um, I was going to go in the jacuzzi. There's like a hot tub down there, but there was a bunch of kids in it and I kind of just want to relax. So. And I think for the rest of the night, I'm probably gonna watch Lord of the Rings. So that's about it. Generally, I'm like exhausted when I get back, so I don't do much in my hotel room besides cook and eat. So good old fall field work. All right guys, so I am back from the field um, and I'm gonna answer a few of your guys' questions that you sent in to me. So the first question that I get the most is, what is the difference between a zoologist and a wildlife biologist? So the answer to this one's pretty simple actually. Uh, a wildlife biologist and a zoologist are pretty much the same thing. Typically you hear wildlife biologists used a little bit more in jobs. But it's really the same thing, um, not much of a difference at all. So a degree in zoology versus a degree in wildlife biology are gonna be pretty similar. That's the answer to that one. 
So another question that I get as well is what kind of uh, experience you need to have to be a wildlife biologist. So this question really differs based on what you want to do. So I only have a bachelor's degree, which has been fine for me so far, but a lot of people do have a master's degree in the United States. You'll find that a lot more or in areas where there's a little bit more competition for jobs. Where I am in Alberta, there is it's more of a focus on construction where you don't necessarily need as much of the advanced education, but I'd say pretty much half and half of our wildlife biology staff either has a master's degree or a bachelor's degree. We don't have anyone with a PhD on our staff, but I do know of some other consulting companies that do have PhDs as well. So I travel the majority of the time in the summer, probably 80 to 90% of the time I'm traveling. Um, and then in the winter, it's more like 10 to 20% of the time that I'm traveling. Um, and then as well, I would say if I wanted to, I could take probably two months off of work usually not consecutively but like i take two weeks here and there like all the time throughout the winter it is quite slow for us in the winter since a lot of the animals either migrate south like birds or they hibernate so there's really not that much to see so things are definitely a lot slower in the winter so we catch up on a lot of our reporting and all that kind of fun stuff permitting applications so that we're good to go for the work in the following summer Another question I get all the time is um, how I stay safe out there when there's like bears and wolves and all that. So uh, we, for bears, we do always carry bear spray and we always go out with a second person. So there's never just one of us there and we use GPS to kind of find our way and we have a truck usually not parked not too far away. Um, so that works out fine and um, we don't carry any guns or anything like that um, though some jobs you do and wolves do not attack people so that is not really a big thing to worry about. Another question I get all the time is how I got my job as a wildlife biologist so I already made a video it's like pretty long. Um, I go into exactly step by step how I got my job and how my journey kind of unfolded and how I got to where I am today. I am going to link to that video above and then below in the description as well too. So if you're interested, you can um, hear into a lot of detail what I did and then some tips as well to help you guys get a similar job. Basically, when you start out, a lot of times you're in the field for a while, like usually like five to 10 years in the field. So that's involving a lot of travel, kind of learning your technical skills, how to identify certain wildlife, everything that you need to learn about animals is best learned uh, actually in the field. However, a lot of times wildlife biologists will actually transition into an office role after they've been in the field for a while, you know, and they want to kind of be home more often for one reason or another. That's more of a position where you are managing wildlife biologists in the field, overseeing their research, like in the case of being, you know, a professor, a leader of a lab, as well as there's like a ton of environmental planning jobs and they might not necessarily be as wildlife focused as some of the other jobs you might do right the field you're still incorporating your knowledge of ecology and science to write reports for permitting applications um, if you're working for government then maybe you are dictating policies that are going to be put into place concerning wildlife and a lot of those are actually in the office so there's definitely options to travel a lot less you just have to seek out those kind of kind of office-based positions over the field positions So this one is really hard to answer because it just varies so much. You can start at minimum wage. I think my first internship, I made minimum wage. Some of my internships, I made nothing. So there's a lot of unpaid jobs, which um, is really unfair to a lot of people who need to work. But unfortunately, there is a lot of unpaid jobs. There's even paid jobs. Like there, I've even seen jobs where you had to pay to work there. So just be aware that those are out there. And, um, but also be aware that you can get paid as well too in an internship. I think I made in my first internship around $12 an hour. And that was with city government. And um, then my next job I made around, it was around $23 an hour. And that was my first job out of university. 
where I did some field work and I did a lot of more administrative type of things. And that is in Alberta. And then the most I've ever made as a wildlife biologist uh, was when I was actually a private consultant. I made almost $1,000 a day. So, you know, there's this huge gap in um, pay scales. So I will say um, I live in an area with a lot of industry, a lot of oil and gas industry. So the salaries are quite a bit higher than you would see somewhere where you don't have all the construction and industry. So. So to become a wildlife biologist, you do not need a degree in wildlife biology. I do not have a degree in wildlife biology. I have a degree in ecology. I think my official degree is environmental systems, ecology, behavior, and evolution. <laughs> and that's from the University of California in San Diego. Uh, that environmental systems program is the one that I did. Um, but you can do wildlife biology with anything that's like ecology, environmental biology, marine biology even, um, environmental science, um, wildlife management, zoology, anything like that is going to be a good option to get you a degree in wildlife biology. Just make sure that you get internships or research experience in university to put on your resume before you graduate because that's going to be more important than what your degree title says. I also want to emphasize, especially with these this, these types of videos um, where I'm showing all the cool stuff about wildlife biology, it's actually a really tough job to do. Um, there's days I think about going into another field. It's hard to travel every single summer and not really have a summer. Um, it's hard to work so much. Like, like this week, I've worked 60 hours already and I still have to work tomorrow. So. It's never ending. I get last minute requests. It's hard for me to, you know, make plans with my friends because I get last minute requests to go out into the field with an hour's notice. Like not every wildlife biologist job is the same, but I think these are common um, concerns that a lot of people have in this field. So um, there is a lot of downsides as well too. I don't want that to discourage you, but um, take a realistic view of the situation of uh, knowing what you're getting into. So these are all the questions I have for today and I'm going to go back to work. If you guys have any more questions that I haven't answered, you can ask them in the comment section. I reply, I try to reply to every single comment and question that I get. Um, that doesn't always happen when things are really busy for me, but I'm going to try. So uh, if you guys who are watching this video want to be a wildlife biologist as your future job, uh, comment in the section below and let me know and uh, subscribe to my channel as well if you want to see more videos like this. I will see you guys next time. Bye.